Greetings, guys and gals. I'm Hunter Station White here with Troy, and we're continuing Miles Edge Worth Ace Attorney investigations. Time to do some logic. So I'm guessing connect the logic safe, uh, the lock safe, and the embassy. That's my guess. Yes. Here we go. We know for a fact that Yadigaras's key was used at this embassy. Furthermore, we found it in the victim, Mr. Cochin's pocket, which leads me to think that perhaps it is the key to the personal safe in the office. Good thinking, sir. Let's go try it out. So it's not a combination safe. Yeah. It appears I was correct. The key that was left to us in the victim's pocket, it literally turned out to be the key for the next piece of the truth. So what's inside? What do we have here? Hey, there's nothing inside. Uh, do you think the Anagarasu made off with the with everything, with everything, sir? Yeah. This reminds me of an episode of, you know, that show Storage Wars? Yeah. Where they go in a storage thing and they find this really ornate safe. And they're like, oh, there's got to be something really valuable in here. They open it and there's nothing inside. Like, we blow all our money. But then they go to, they take the safe anyway. It turns out the safe itself is worth like a crap ton of money. Oh, yeah. So that, that was funny. No, detective, I believe all we need is a closer look. Well, well there's obviously Technically, like a Technically, yeah, there's something. There. Yeah. But I don't... What is this here? It looks like the ripped corner of a piece of paper, sir. No, I don't think it's ripped. It seems more to me like it's stuck in the safe. Hey, you're right. It won't budge an inch, not even when I tell you about it. But I don't think I've ever seen paper stuck on the inside of a safe before. Hold it. Hold it. Detective, I think you have it backwards. It's not the paper that's strange. It's the safe. What do you mean? What I mean is the secret to the safe is that... It has two compartments. Yeah. It, this now this is reminding me of uh, another thing from the the fifth Home Alone movie. They find a giant safe in the bottom of their basement. It's like the size of a door. They open it and there's nothing inside. But it turns out inside the door of the safe, there's another door, which yeah. is like this wine cellar. Even just eyeballing it, you can see the inside is a bit too shallow. Furthermore, with the unnatural way the paper is stuck stuck at the back of the safe, I'd say there is an extra bit of space be behind the wall of the safe. In other words, the safe has a second compartment. What? I suppose you are correct in asserting that the paper is stuck in an unnatural manner. However, what if what you say is correct and there's a second compartment, how do we go about opening the door to itself? As you can see, there is no other lock or keyhole in sight. I even turned up the brightness so you could tell. Actually, there is one spot of... There is one more spot of interest to me on the sixth. Oh? Yes, and I believe the spot is the keyhole to our mystery second lock. The safe and its locks. All right, then. Since you are so sure of yourself, show me how you deduced your answer. Here, right? Examine. Hey, there's a hole here, sir. It's a little too oddly shaped for a latch hole. It's a funny shape for a latch hole, huh? It's shaped kind of like a star, don't you think, sir? So do you put the knife in there? Yeah. Detective, I would hardly call that shape a star. There must be some reason for this hole. Well, there's gotta be some reason why the whole shape's so strangely right. Am I overthinking here? No, I don't think so. Maybe I'm overthinking things. No, there's no way I could ever do that. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, could you please be quiet for a second? You're frightening me. So deduce that, maybe? With, um... Uh... The knife that had that same design. Yes. Wait, what's it? I that? think it was that one, yeah. Yeah. Eureka! This piece of evidence is the key to the safe. I'm not entirely convinced it is, but I'm willing to entertain any explanation you might have. Oh. Um, don't worry, sir. I'm sure you're right what you said. Uh, although I'm not quite sure how that piece of evidence is related to the safe. Oh, okay. Um, okay. it's bad enough for Francesca to doubt me, but Detective Gumshoe as well. I must remain calm and examine the safe once more for a clue on how to open it. Yeah. It's the... when you flip it, it's the other. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was one of the two. Yeah. So it's this part, which I think he called a, a star. Oh, was it? I thought uh, I thought he said that about the other night. But the other part was... I don't know. Eureka! Doesn't the shape of this keyhole remind you of something, Francesca? It's a shape. It does look very familiar. However, I believe it's simply a natural for the safe slot mechanism. It's just for keeping the door shut, nothing more. Hold it! Is that so? The person who used this safe, Mr. Cochin, made sure this safe had two compartments in order to hide something. Do you honestly think someone like that would allow the keyhole to the hidden half to look so obvious like a keyhole that even the average person could figure it out? You, you can't be serious. 
Are you saying this horn is the keyhole to the hidden compartment of the safe? That's precisely what I'm saying. And I'll prove to you right now that the Atagarasu's key is the key that'll open it. Objection! Objection! The Atagarasu's key? Mas et rest is it better be a very bad joke. Sorry, but this is no joke. The Atagarasu's key is the very key that will open the second compartment of the safe. He knows that the key opens the first compartment of the safe. But the keyhole you're talking about is of an entirely different shape than that of the key. Well, you can flip it, right? Yeah, I just have to get there. I think it's the other end. Oh, well, this end? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go over this again, shall we? The Anagrasu's key was originally made to open Mr. Koshin's safe in the Kadopian Embassy. We confirm that this that is fact by opening the door to a safe with it. Now let's take a look at the back end of the key. Looking at the knife portion head on, what do you see? Oh, yeah, it's got the same shape. What are you talking about? Oh! It appears that you've come to understand what I'm talking about. When viewed head on, the knife's blade is the exact same shape as the key. The real function of the knife portion is to act as the key to the hidden portion of the safe. But that's preposterous. Because it looks like a knife and was used to kill- used like the one to kill Mr. Faraday seven years ago. We fell under the misconception that it was always meant to be a knife. But for both the safe and the key to conceal such clever tricks, whatever is hidden inside the secret section must be of incredible importance. So it's even possible that such what I've been searching for is inside. Scrappy, hurry up and open that safe. Uh, yes sir, open it now sir. So what's, what's she looking for? Oh. oh, these items, they're... It's a bunch of funny shaped things. Massive pieces of art, huh, sir? You're in the way. Now move, Scrappy. I didn't think I was in the way. <laughs> These pieces of art. They're identical to ones that have been stolen from various countries over the world. Now they're making it look like Manny Cochin might be the... Thief. I figured as much. Yeah. These are the treasures in the section of the safe that... These are the treasures this section of the safe was to hide from view. I believe a more thorough examination is required. Yeah, what kind so of difference is that? This looks like a dragon. These are pieces of stolen art from around the world. I wonder how much they're worth, especially this one. Hey! Scrappy, don't touch those valuable pieces of art with your filthy pockets. Why do you have any idea? Why do you have any idea of what would happen to you if one of them were to break? Is it just me, or did you hit one of the pieces of art just now? These are pieces of stone. Oh, okay, come on. take a look at the paper, maybe. Well, that was a new web sound. This is the document we thought was stuck earlier. I wonder what it's about. Beats me, sir. Why don't we take a look at it first before we give up, Detective? Mr. Cochin's name is written here on the last page. I wonder what the significance of this document is. That's it? I guess so. These are pieces of stone art from around the world. Okay, same thing. Can we examine that, uh, or did, did we get that in our evidence? No. We didn't? Oh. Here. Um, okay, well, can we do some logic now? Because we have two pieces, I think. Franziska... We've had those before. We had them before. Uh, Franziska's return and stealing of the secret. But yeah, she was looking for the treasures and she found them. Mm -hmm. To steal your dirtiest secret. Is it possible that the dirty secret the Adagrasu was out to steal is in this very room? Dirty secret? Franziska, you're in pursuit of some dirty underhanded dealings yourself, are you not? Something tells me that this is no coincidence. In that case, then, the person I'm looking for here is the Bablalele East Embassy, huh? The head of smuggling operation. Hmm? What was that? Smuggling um, ring? Yeah. The battle of these? I just think I might need to ask Francesca a bit about her smuggling case in more depth. So, I guess we'll do that. She's all the way over there now. Smuggling. Smuggling. Francesca, when we last talked, you said that you were on a trail of the smuggling ring. I suppose the reason you're here right now is related to that? Yes. After analyzing the intel we've gathered from various countries, this embassy rose to the top of, his, of our list of sites to investigate, and this is what tipped us off. 
this accounting document? It's only one page of the whole thing, so we're not sure about all the details. So that's what else is in the safe, was it? However, it's enough of us to grab on the tail of the beast. For you see, this type of paper was made only in the kingdom of Kadopia, which means somewhere in the countries of Anabast and Bolena is the head. The one pulling the strings been this entire smuggly ring. That's Franzeska for you. She's amazing pursuing this case with all she has. So now you have that. Now I bet if you go back and examine stuff in the safe, it'll connect to them. I like this music. That's the, the paper. Oh, you wanted just the paper? Yeah, because she gave us a paper, and I'm guessing that those papers there are the other papers. I thought they were the same. They look the same. With this, you're saying? Yeah. Eureka! Take a good look at these documents, Franziska. Oh, it's they are the same. Yeah. It says there are three pages in total, and yet there are only two here. Correct. Now take a look at the smuggling activity document in your possession. Tell me, is it not possible your page is taken from this set of three? Well, well, it certainly looks that way. Mm. It's a different I language. Cannot. That looks almost similar to, um... What was it? Uh, old ruin, um, or ruin, rather, not ruin, uh, cryptography. Um, I remember I was studying, like, old, uh, language evolution, and there's, uh, symbols that looked a lot like the ones on the top there in bold. Well, okay. By putting our multi part puzzle, puzzle together, we seem to have arrived at an answer. It seems you have now found what you were looking for. Yes, and this is, it has become crystal clear. That Mr. Cochin himself was responsible for the mass smuggling of the Blilla Is Inc. Blilla Is Inc. Blilla Is Inc. is a special product of the Republic of Blilla. However, due to a special reason, only a limited volume is ever exported. Hold it. And that reason is? That's classified. It's on a need to know basis, and you need not know. In any case, it seems that head of the smuggling ring was our victim, Mr. Manny Cochin. So he was the head. I can stop. Ah. His base was in an embassy, thus it was hard for both our country and his to interfere, making the ideal conditions under which, making the ideal conditions under which to run a smuggling operation. <laughs> but it's so frustrating. I lost the person I was to rate judgment down upon as my fifth of justice. Well, even if he is dead, we still have a reason, a responsibility to look into his misdeeds. You expect me to live with dead man? Then I'm not interested. Francesca, you must know that Manny Cochin was the suspect in the KG-8 incident. Of course I know. On top of being the head of the smuggling ring, there is the matter of what really happened in that case that needs to be resolved. Nice. Hey. Mm -hmm. This music played, um... When did this music play before? I thought this played when we met Callisto U before. I could be wrong. I thought her music was the. Um, she has her own theme, yeah. But I mean, I, like when she revealed her past, I thought. Oh, it was with her. Oh. Yeah. Are you done investigating? Well, whenever they do sad stuff. Yeah. You realize now, don't you, that this girl is the only one it could be? Now come along quietly, Yadi Grasu K. Faraday. You are under arrest for the murder of Maddie Cochin. Miss Yadiwas, please, you have to believe me. I didn't do it. I chased the fake Yadagarasu in here, and he... he was... already... You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Hold it! I'd like to help you reduce the number of mistaken arrests Interpol makes. What is that supposed to mean? I believe I told you that Kay Faraday is not the culprit of this crime. Very well. I suppose I have no choice. I'll show you just how foolish your claims are. Testimony? Yeah. Why arrest K? Yeah, now that you look at that thing, that jacket in the background does look kind of western. Even your police confirmed the Yadigras who infiltrated the, the blah, 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 E's embassy tonight. Utilizing the confusion caused by the fire, the Yadigras snuck into the embassy. Furthermore, this girl claims to be the Yadigras And most importantly, other than her, there was no one else here in, the, in here with the body. Your reason for suspecting K is because you think she's the Yadigras Exactly. But it isn't just me. She calls herself the Yadagrasu. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I was only out to capture the fake Yadagrasu. Imposter or not, it matters not. The Yadagrasu is the Yadagrasu. 
Very well, then I shall prove that Kate is not the Adagarasu who killed Maddie Cochin. Go ahead and try. Show me what the prosecutors of this country are made of. Rebuttal. Alright. So what do we have to look at here? Confused and positive fire, the Adagarasu is stuck into the MC. This girl claims to be the Adagrasu. That's nothing. Most importantly, other than her, there was no one else in here with the body. Hold it! Do you have proof of that? I really don't think that that being the first to discover the body makes her the killer by default. No, but if you saw the self-purported Yanagarasu standing in front of a body, wouldn't you get a little suspicious yourself? Gnurk! Even so, I'd still listen to what this person had to say before I passed judgment. <laughs> Are you talking about your symptoms or steps for Juva and the suspicion? I think the pain of being falsely accused is something you really should experience. What's that actually happened? I personally know what it, I know that feeling very well, sir. Yeah, Gumshoe's been accused like, what, thrice? He was accused, I don't know, maybe only once in that twice. This game. Was he accused? Oh, twice. Yeah, in this game, twice. But was he accused in any other game? Wait, who was accused twice in this game? Gumshoe. When he was accused in Turnabout Visitor and Turnabout Reminiscence. Oh. Yeah. And given oh, my yeah. situation, I know exactly what it's like, too. Edgeworth was accused in Turnabout Goodbyes. The first game. Yeah. Game, yeah. Where Von Karma wanted to uh, find yeah. him guilty. I'm fine with never experiencing it ever. Does she experience it? No spoilers. We'll find out. Yeah. Are you done with our your little group conference? So Agent Sheila suspects K of murder simply because K is the Yadagarasu. But if I can prove that the Yadagarasu's goal is not related to murder, then may be able to begin to reason with her. Press this one. Hold it! They may have confirmed it, but are you telling me that no one could catch the thief? If so, you're basically admitting the Yadagarasu that... The Yadagarasu that committed murder eluded us. I chased after the other grass with the the bug in the east I'm seeing right away. And that is also why I'm making this arrest right now. Because at the end of my long chase, there is only this girl. In any case, this is what I believe happened tonight. Utilizing the confusion caused by fire, the other grass is stuck in the MC. Hold it! The confusion caused by the fire. Are you saying that the other grass was not the arsonist who started the fire? A suspicious person in a long coat was spotted in the area. Officers in the, officers in the area claim to have seen that person start the fire. Mm -hmm. Sounds like we have a phantom in our midst. Well, that's kind of a reference to the fifth game, but I won't say much. Ah, uh, yeah. In a way, he could be considered a phantom, with the way he randomly appears. Was the fifth game made before this game? No, the fifth game was after. Okay. This was, 20, er, this was 2009. Uh, Ace 25 was 2013. Mm. Just because she calls herself that, it doesn't prove that she's a killer. No, but it does give her a motive. The Anagrasu sent a card saying, I will be there to steal your dirty secret. Furthermore, there are documents pertaining to some smuggling activity in this room. She obviously wanted to steal them. So she killed Mr. Koshin with the key. I see. Her logic is very sound. I suspected nothing less of Agent Lang's secretary. However, that statement just now, it doesn't sound right. It might just be the opening I need. Which one? This one? Do you want to steal documents? Oh, this is new. Oh, present the key, because if she killed Cochin for the key, why didn't she take it? She left it on him. That's my idea. OBJECTION! Agent Sheena, I regret to inform you, but there is a flaw in your logic. Oh. Even if you claim that she is the killer, and the, and the Yadagarasu, I'm certain that securing the smuggling documents is not the motive behind this murder. The key to the safe in this room was found on Mr. Cochin's body. Furthermore, the Yadagarasu would not be so stupid as to leave without the documents. Ooh, that's a new face. I've never seen her show emotion before. Yeah. By the simple fact that the documents were still in the safe when we looked, it's obvious the killer's target was not the safe at all. All this. Then perhaps she didn't know that Mr. Cochin had the key on him. OBJECTION! If that's the case, then why would she have needed to kill him? Because I can think of no reason for her to kill him if she had not known that fact. Hold it. Indeed. Need. Reason. All of this is simply our conjecture- uh, our conjecturing after the fact. It's entirely possible that she accidentally killed him when she was sneaking in. 
Perhaps she didn't notice the safe second compartment before returning the key. Huh? But the fact still remains that Mr. Cochin was stabbed to death. Objection! Objection! But you have no definitive proof that it was the key to... It was Kay who committed the act. Actually, I do. I saw her holding the knife she used on the victim with my own eyes. What? Allow me to tell you a bit more about the evidence that will put her away on in bars. Uh-oh. Okay. Definitive evidence. The knife wound on the body is consistent with the blade of the knife. The knife with the butterfly handle is the murder weapon which the killer was holding. Oh, that's... Okay, that's not it. I assume she obtained the... I assume she obtained the knife from the display rack and used it on the victim. The knife is a part of a special three-piece set, which has a design like the mother. The evidence and testimony, it all points to the girl. There's no counter-argument. We gotta contradict the thing with the knife, I think. Extended velar nasal! That is your definitive evidence! You see now that she is definitely the killer, right? No! Monsieur Atreus, you've got to believe me! I saw a suspicious person in a long black coat alongside the, outside the embassy, I swear! And you came in here because you were chasing this suspicious person? That's right. C'est vrai. I ran into this office only because I was chasing after that person. But when I had this room, it was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. I felt something on the ground next to my foot, so I turned on the lights. But then... Oh! Who's there? Is this Some she? kind of creepy voice. We don't know who Who's it is. there? <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> this is... How does she get behind her? I don't know. <laughs> Something's off with Sheena, I think. I came to this room while hearing the girl scream. And when I saw her holding the knife, I immediately restrained her. So the object Kate fell by her feet on the floor was the murder weapon. I had the knife analyzed right away, but we failed to find anyone. Anyone prints on it? Did she say that? But this suspicious person in the black coat who came in this room before me. Hold it. You continue to insist there was such a person, but if there was, where did they go? Could have helped the window. Said I don't know, but I know they gave it here. Hold it. That sounds like the desperate excuses of a suspected killer, not a trustworthy testimony. You understand, don't you? We can't trust this girl's words, Mr. Edgeman. Gnark! She has a point. Even if Kay's words are the truth, I must show that they are with some they are with some solid evidence. Monsieur Edgeware, I really didn't. Okay. Don't, don't worry. If you didn't do it, there must exist a way for me to prove that. Hold it. Still not giving up, I see. In that case, try to counter my argument if you can. Don't worry. I can and I will. Alright, let's see if we can do your butthole. So that. Be Hold it! Does this mean that you already have the results back? We have confirmed that the shape of the Bandana E's knife blade matches the wound. Please don't confuse the efficiency of Interpol's forensic teams with you. Objection! Objection! I won't if you don't underestimate our police force. And so, and so we're clear, I hardly say your logic is sound, which you will see in a bit. If you can prove me wrong, please, by all means, go ahead. That has been my intention all along. Now, let us return to your testimony. <laughs> Butterfly handle is the murder weapon. Hold it! You mean to say that you saw Kay holding the murder weapon with your own eyes? I was also on the search for the Adagarasu. When I heard the girl scream coming from this room, I rushed over straight away. When I arrived, I saw the girl standing here motionless with the knife in her hands. But I already told you, I only came in because I was also after the Adagarasu. So she said she saw Kay holding the knife. This is Peter's person I saw came into the room. So who is this guy? Or know. girl? But when I entered, it was pitch dark. I felt something by my foot on the floor, so I turned on the lights, and then... He found out it was the murder weapon at your feet. How many times do I have to tell you? We can't trust the words of a suspect. The only thing you'll accept as evidence, is that it? That's the only acceptable way to counter an agent of Interpol on the scene of a crime. Monsieur Edgeworth, do you have some kind of evidence that can prove me innocent? I think I do, because there's one piece of evidence I find to be a bit interesting. I think I need to carefully examine that piece of evidence again. Okay. You know, it's actually kind of interesting how Edgeworth is actually kind of a defense attorney. In this case, yeah, because yeah. he's defending Kay. And then, was he defending... 
Gumshoe, or did he kind of? I think he defended Gumshoe too. He, well, he, he, I think, yeah, he, he did, yeah, he did. And he had to defend himself in the airline. Yeah, so it's kind of it makes sense because his father was a defense attorney. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what I think we have to do here is, uh, and believe it. Okay, well, I don't, I won't spoil a whole lot, but Edgeworth, um, his choice to become a prosecutor or a defense attorney becomes a big plot point later in the series. Um, but I won't go, go into it right now. Um, but I think what we have to do is present the knife when on that statement, because uh, I think that they. Um, this one? Uh, I think it's the next one when it says she got it on the rack, because the the handle's different than the other ones, right? It's because the they were burnt off. Yeah, and, but like the, they, they say that, that you can remove the handle. Yeah. So that's what we think happened. That the handle that was used that has the killer's prints on it was removed, and the killer changed it, it. Okay. so that the prints wouldn't be on it. Well, that's my I'll opinion. press it just to make sure. Yeah. There might be something more specific. I ask that you please refrain from speculation. Is this how that office is derived from the evidence? There's no room for debate. Um. Oh, I mean, hold it. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to speak up a bit, sir. Mas Edgeworth knows that an ungraceful loss will not be tolerated, my subordinates. I love how she's just reveling in the fact that Edgeworth is her subordinate in this case. She loves being on top. Now, we but her hypothesis was factual logic. As a vice, what was your investigation for? Yes, you are correct. Thank you. <laughs> Helping your subordinate out with advice is the job of any good superior. <laughs> she just loves being superior. She seems to be rather enjoying herself, but she is correct, nonetheless. Agent Sheena, please continue with your testimony. This also could be important. Hold it! Uh, the knife is the yeah. to talk about here. About the three piece set, is there really no other like it? Let's ask Ambassador Paleto for more details, shall mm, we? Right. The knives are indeed special. They have the butterfly, the symbol of the Republic of Thula, engraved on them. And because there are only three of them in the world, they are very, very valuable. Collecting the voice, why correct them? The national symbol, huh? Well, the knives are covered by the butterfly design. Along with the Alabastian said, our respective countries only have three knives each. I see. Are you satisfied now? If so, let's continue. So we gotta present the knife. To which statement, though, I'm not sure. This one, I think, probably makes the most sense. Actually, wait, did he say to check over the knife again? <laughs> yes, but I think what he was referring to was, like, when we looked at it earlier and we saw that the handle was removable. I think that's basically what they were implying we were supposed to do. Okay. Well, we did that earlier, so... Yeah. Do you want to try this one, though? I think so, yeah. Objection! Objection! This piece of evidence shows us the contradiction in your uh -oh. testimony. So it's wrong. By your silence, I assume you agree <laughs> with my conclusion. No, I just don't have a worthy response. In any case, I have some documents I need to attend to. Oh, hey, I can get out a piece of paper. Uh, mm -hmm. Edgeworth never pulls out a piece of paper, so I don't need that as often as yeah. You're wasting life force, team. Uh, okay, so we tried that one, right? Try the three-piece set. Here. Objection! No, uh, even you can't talk your way out of the contradiction this piece points out. I guess not. Hmm. I knew it. Because I don't need to talk my way out of it. But it's... I don't like to waste time de delving into subjects that don't warrant a response. Ouch. I agree that I was mistaken. Thankfully, in this game, uh, the life force bar only goes down by a tenth for each mistake, whereas in Phoenix Wright it goes down by a fifth, so you can make more mistakes in this game. Yeah. No, I believe there's still room for debate, and I'll thank you for- I'll thank you to not decide that for me. I didn't decide anything for you. I'm really looking to, at the reality the way it is. Objection! Objection! Hm. Are you sure you're not just viewing the facts through rose-colored glasses? Monsieur Twers, I think she's mad at you. Perhaps. But our definitions of reality are a tad different. I, I have a pair of sunglasses I should bring next time. Are, are the two of you done chatting? Agent Sheena's proof is the Palais knife that Kay was allegedly holding. Yeah, so, uh, how are you gonna prove that Kay didn't do it, sir? If Agent Sheena wants to suspect Kay merely because Kay was the only one here, 
then I must show with evidence that Kate couldn't have committed the murder. Ah, but do you have such evidence, sir? Yes. There's one piece of evidence that seems very unnatural to me. And I believe it is my duty to point that out to Agent Sheena. Hmm. The knife wound on the body is consistent with the blade of that knife. Can you look at the description of Mr. Um, uh, Cochin's body? Oh, wait, there's more. Oh, wait, oh, that wasn't good. Here. Single stab to base of neck. Body wasn't badly burned by the fire. Hmm. <laughs> to Mr. Edwards, his samurai daddy, Mary Van Neal, Tokyo. Huh, that's cool. Uh, well, I don't know. Is it walk through time? We have till we have a lot of life. We have a few more. I'm running out of ideas. Do we? Do we? Wait, go back one. Do we present the the knife to this statement? Uh, and the next one, where they're talking about the butterfly handle. Hold it. We'll press it, and then we can. Me to say that you saw Kay holding the murder weapon with your own eyes. The Kay, yeah, we saw this already. Yeah. And then, so Kay never, this is earlier when we saw this, I was talking about, like, um, if she saw Kay actually holding the knife or not. Oh. Uh, yeah, go back one. I, it's gotta be the knife. Objection! Objection. This one it is. So the murder weapon was the knife with the butterfly design on it? But is that really the truth? What are you getting at? I'd like for you to take a look at this. Jeez, that's quite the knife. There is blood on the blade, and yet there's not a speck of blood on the hand. So the handle's been removed. Yeah. Swapped. This signifies at the time of the crime, a different handle was attached to this blade. The knife that Kay was holding had its handle switched and was in fact not the real murder weapon. It wasn't the real murder weapon. This knife can be taken apart. Shall we give it a go? I guess just go to examine right away. As you can see, the Blue Lai's knife has now been disassembled into two parts. The killer must have put the murder weapon out of the victim's body and proceeded to swap the knife's original handle with this butterfly one. It was all to create the illusion that Mr. Cochin was killed with the butterfly-themed knife. <laughs> I have a feeling that she should be like a computer glitching when she gets nervous. Uh, basically, she's in my mind, she's like Gladys from Portal. Oh. This should clear up any and all suspicion surrounding Kay. She has no emotion. She's white and black, just like Gladys. You, your argument isn't airtight yet. Oh, so... It's possible that the girl herself is the one who switched handles. Hold it! Don't be ridiculous. For what purpose would she do such a thing? I, I don't care to know how the cri cri criminal things. The way they view the world is beyond the comprehension of a normal person like myself. Therefore, I wouldn't put anything past them, no matter how they ought it seem. That was intentional, by the way. Objection! Ha! The truth is right there in front of you, and this knife will show you the way. You will come to see that Kay is not, and could not have been Mr. Cochin's killer. Oh, what? Look up there. What is this? I'll take a look at it, yeah, it's right. What is this mark on here? What is this thing you call clue? It's the mark of a flower. You assume- I assume you know what this means. No, not really. Butterflies rest on flowers all the time to drink their sweet nectar. Boom, butterfly effect. And so, I'm doing so many quotes this episode, holy crap. And so they do. However, would this butterfly really drink the nectar of this flower? The answer is clearly, not a chance. Now to prove the relationship between the butterfly and the flower with this, that pamphlet. Did I really use the pamphlet? Because it connects the two countries, right? That's my guess, anyway. Take that! I haven't had that one show up in a while. You can't be serious. <laughs> it appears as you've made the connection. The flower on this blade is designed after a certain country's national symbol. That's right, the Kingdom of Alabast. In other words, this blade is from one of Alabast's ornamental knives. This part of the knife handle 
has blah blah blah's national symbol of a butterfly on it. Therefore, it is undeniably blah blah ease in origin. origin. But as we both know, you can't kill someone with just a knife handle. Incidentally, when exactly did the murder occur again, Agent Sheena? After the fire had broken up. That's right. Kay entered the Blalalaiz Embassy after the fire had taken place. Furthermore, she had not been to the Alabastian side of the building before that. And on top of that, not a single person passed between the two countries during the fire. That's not true. Wait, between the fire? Uh, during the fire? Did you say? Oh, was it during? Because I know that the samurai... Samurai crossed, yeah. Yeah. Which means that Kay could not have transported an Alaba Alabastian object over here. This makes it impossible for her to be the true killer. Oh, way to go, Mr. Edwards, sir. What a great victory. <gasps> oh. What? He does the hand thing like Saw it, kind of. Well, oh, it's not right. the same Well, thing, Saw it just kind of did it back and But forth. they both had like... Like a thing where they thing, clapped yeah. their hands together, yeah. Maybe he's, a, maybe he's the killer then because of that. It just... Weird. When they do hand things. Dot, 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 dot. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Uh-oh. I'm happy we got this far and cleared Kay's name. But what worries me now is what'll happen next. Objection! Objection! What is the meaning of this? An alabastian knife here? Do you mean, how did this knife find its way to the Republic of Zangfa? Uh, blah, blah, blah. He <laughs> didn't just find its way over. Rather, we should focus on how it was smuggled over. You know what? My brain hurts thinking about what about it while we're just standing around. Thinking while you're on the run? Now that's the way a real crime chief operates. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much, Monsieur Edwards, for proving me innocent, I mean. You believed in me the whole time, right? Tell me you did. Uh, not really, but... <laughs> Come on. You don't have to be so shy about it. Hold it. Dot, dot, dot. Your argument is still not airtight. Would you care to elaborate? I understand now that the girl didn't commit the murder. However, there is still the possibility she is the Yatakarasu. again? look, how many times do I have to explain it to you? I am the real Yatakarasu. Mm, her saying that just gets her in trouble. Yeah. I'm not like that fake one that goes around setting fires, okay? The speakeasy arsonist. Another rep. I'm doing loads of references this episode. Holy crap. Whether you're the real deal or a fake, it doesn't really matter. All I have to say is this, Colin. I have my suspicions that this girl is the one who started the fire. Objection! Objection. Objection. Preposterous. Uh, actually, that, that would be a good interjection. Preposterous? Think about it. On what grounds did you suspect her of such a thing? The fact she calls herself the Anagarasu. That in itself is the most elegant proof. Madame Sheena. Yes. I... I have no intention of talking, taking back any of what I've said. Dot, 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 question mark. I am the great Sipia Tegarasu, and I refuse to allow some imposter to claim the name as their own. The pass of justice that my father appointed me towards, I will work it the best I can. It's not good to be so stubborn. I hope you can understand that. Thanks a lot for the concern, Ms. Madame Sheena. Let me share something with you too, as a token of my appreciation. These sunglasses totally do nothing for you, so I'll steal them from you next time, okay? With dash dash exclamation point question mark. Well, I guess we better get going. Going? To where? To the kingdom of Alabast. If we don't go, we won't know for sure, right? I suppose not. We won't get anywhere simply by standing here thinking. To see where the Alabastian knife came from. We'll have to pay the... We'll have to pay the Alabastian embassy a visit. Let's go, my Cetrus. As you are my subordinate. I'm gonna put lots of emphasis on that every time she says that. I will not tolerate you bringing the investigation too hot. Hmm. Understood. <laughs> no coupons for anyone? Jeez. All right. I, I picture, um, what's that guy's name? Palato? Pal yeah. I picture Palato, like, being the kind of guy who just, like, makes up coupons on the spot, like, writes them down. Like, and just gives them to people. Kind of like, you know, how kids will often do that for, like, their parents and, like, gives for a free breakfast in bed or whatever. Oh, right, yeah. I picture him being that kind of guy. What the heck kind of... So oh, it's Lang! Oh, okay. it's Got off! Uh, I meant a glass. 
One, 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 <laughs> one, one, one. One, one. Shifu, 99 cards. All 99 members are most likely here to count it for, sir. Hey, you. Yeah, you, the second number one from my right. Sir, yes, sir. Here, a birthday present for you. What? Um, why? Shifu, I didn't know that you knew all of our birthdays. Uh, what a kind heart you have. Shifu, you are more of a man than women. <laughs> so what's he doing here? Um, I'm really sorry, but it's not my birthday. Long as he says, a cop who disrespects others soon feels the disciplinary bite of an elder. That present isn't for you. It's for your younger brother's wife's younger brother. <laughs> Tell him I said hi and happy birthday, won't you? Yes, sir. Shifu, I can't believe you remember that much about each of us. Shifu, I, I'm so moved that I can't stop crying. Oh, I should probably leave them to their alone time. All right, meeting's over. Everyone have your posts. Oh, where'd she now go? She stayed behind the other room, I think. Oh, okay. Dismissed. Sir. Yo, were you guys there the whole time? I got a call from Sheena, and she's already filled me in. It sounds like you're out to get in my way again. <laughs> I have absolutely no intention of interrupting your investigation. I simply request that you grant me permission to investigate the Alabastian Embassy. And what if I say no? Objection! Agent Lang, this man is my supporter. I was gonna say that even before she said that. If she didn't say it, I was gonna put that in the sentence. Oh, man. Yeah. Fantastic. As I have received permission from the ambassador, he is to be extended the same rights. Sorry, sis, but it's not that simple. Alabast has the strictest immigration regulations in the world. Wouldn't you know? Even among my elite men, only about half of them are admitted into the country. Besides, many more cooks in the kitchen and we might spoil the soup if you not me. How dare you make such assumptions? Don't take this the wrong way. But I thought I was in charge of Alabast, Miss Von Carver. <laughs> I'm trying to understand, okay? Things over at Alabaster are a bit of a mess right now. <laughs> I don't know why I found that. What do you mean by a bit of a mess? No one told you. We had an incident in Alabast as well. This is what we call a decision based on the investigation, Mr. Prosecutor. Look, Wolfie, this is just let us in already. Hold it. Is that all his men coming back? Is there a problem here, Agent Light? Oh, this is new. Oh, it's all... Oh, the, the other countries. Who men. was that guy? Not really. Just having a discussion about whether or not to let these guys in. Ambassador Alba, I ask you please allow these people who are inferior to me into the investigation. New character, Alba. Oh boy. I guess I have to get an old man voice ready for this guy. Uh, he is old. But the judge's voice... I can't cross... I have to be careful not to cross over with the judge. Debate because of my country. I'm terribly sorry for placing you good people in that kind of situation. It is all because I lacked the strength to govern well. Please, it is nothing of the sort, Ambassador. You weakling quirkus, curse your frailty and inability to effect change in your country. What are you? The thing is, investigations conducted in my country have been under Agent Lang. And it is my judgment that in order to minimize disruption in the investigation, I should leave everything up to Agent Lang. He's playing with his beard. There, you see? Oh, no way! Hold it. Oh, no. <laughs> the two ambassadors are gonna duke it out? Ambassador Alba, I ask you please reconsider letting them into Alabas. What's that? My very own secretary has been murdered at the Battle of Mona's Embassy. And he was apparently caught up in some very shady dealings, completely unbeknownst to me. Although I ask for your cooperation in your investigation. These aren't much, but I hope they can cover your travel expenses to blah someday. All right, all right, I get it. Even if you beg Ambassador Alba, I still have to get the final okay anyway. All right, you said Monsieur Dwayne's way in. 
Not so, f not so fast, my little crow girl. You're still a witness on the Blood Isle murder. So I'd like you to please stand by. Please say the Republic of Blood Isle. Detective Gumshoe, please take good care of Kay for me. Yes, sir. Sounds good to me. The fewer troublemakers, the better. Rasp. Rasp. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how you're supposed to vocalize that sound. Hey, Miss George Wells. Yes. So I wanted to ask for a while now, but that lady over there, is he, she who I think she is? That's right. I didn't introduce the two of you yet. Francesca von Karma, the prosecutorial prodigy. It's nice to see you again. Oh, I know it. You're the whip lady. You may address me as Miss von Karma. Me, Madame von Karma, I leave the investigation of Alabast in your hands. Merci. <laughs> Rest assured, I will outsmart both the smuggling ring and the Atarasu. Uh, I don't think you're saying that. <laughs> I just think it's That's funny because so he's talking to a French person. The smuggling ring, huh? Perhaps I should ask Francesca a bit more about them before I head into Alabast. Ah, oh, and I mustn't forget to thank Ambassador Palano for all that he's done for me. Maybe we can ignore it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to Just get into the other place, though. Um... I, mean, I don't know why this episode has got some weird character development for Francisca, and I don't know if it's the game that's causing me to do it, or just me rapidly, like, fleshing out the characters. You've made so much progress in your investigation, says the sh Such a short period of time. It's truly amazing. Agent Hicks, whose help I had requested, was cut down before he completed his task. Yeah, that was... In the that second was case. Yeah. There is no room for further failure in my perfect investigation. In spite of that, I believe you were able to obtain some insight into the ring, correct? It was this. I simply made some deductions based on this smuggled item I was following. You mean the blah blah e zinc? But why are these restrictions on the export of blah blah e zinc to begin with? That's classified into pull in Hold it! Hold it. Francesca, as your subordinate, I'm part of your investigation now. Don't you think it would be beneficial if I was as well informed as you? Point taken, subordinate. Very well, I'll fill you in. Recently we discovered some very well-made counterfeit bills circulating in Zeng Fa. Counterfeit bills? Yes, as you may have deduced. The counterfeits are being made with Berbaz Special Balalese Ink. It's virtually impossible to distinguish bills made with Berbaz Ink from real funds. Thus it would only natural for Interpol to keep an eye on the Republic of Balala. I think it's just the blow up thing that's just making me more, like, joke inclined in this case, I don't know. Correct. Mr. Cochin was smuggling large amounts of blah blah ease ink. Furthermore, he was charged with running the embassy's pretty equipment. Who was in charge? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, that's all the evidence. I need to know is that he was behind- Oh, Cochin, sorry. Oh, okay. So he had the smuggling thing, which is why he had that stuff in his case. Uh, yeah. Safe, yeah. However, there remains one tiny problem. Let me guess, you still have yet to find the counterfeit bills or the smuggled ink? Yes, and while for this listing things, I might as well add the counterfeit plates to the pile. Since we haven't been able to locate any of these items in the Blue East Embassy, we're looking into the Alabastian Embassy next. It doesn't matter where they're hidden. Mark my words, I will find some. So counterfeit dollar bills, I guess this is like... Actually, I heard a story recently. Apparently, in the U.S., they have there were bills that were counterfeited. They were so like the real ones that like they almost basically considered them real dollar bills. Okay, I'll have to look up the story. May you let me through? Sorry, sir, but currently clearing the area uh, beyond a fallen burnt brush. Ask for your patience until you are done. Very well. Oh, and I hope the the brush clearing goes smoothly. I just wanted to see if I could go back. Oh, we didn't get there. These flowers are a gift from Global Studios. Ah. Oh, was that the place that made Steel Cyber? I think it was. First yeah. game? They seem to be prospering quite a bit thanks to their constant stream of hit shows. That's good to hear that they're doing all right. Who's in, who's in charge of Global Studios? <laughs> yeah, good question, because Vasquez was. <laughs> she got a. Uh, found guilty. Yeah. Aw, oh, you know what we have to talk to him. Unless. Unless we can come in now. You have been granted permission to enter by Ambassador Alba. Please feel free to enter the Flower Nation, the Kingdom of Alabast. 
the Flower Nation, you say? Well, the garden certainly lives up to that name. Yes, it does. Our rose garden, which is in full bloom right now, is really something else. Oh, if only it wasn't. I would, I would enjoy myself a bit more then. So I guess we can't go in until we talk to everybody. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, uh, save that guy for last. Okay, I'm glad you were not hurt, but please refrain, refrain from such recklessness, all right? What if you'd, what if you'd run into the Yadagarasu? You could have been killed. Sorry to make you worry like that. I'll be more careful from now on. Should try to be careful. Good girl. It's good to conduct some self-reflection every once in a while. Hee <laughs> It's funny, you know, when I talk to you, Monsieur Atwes, it's like you're talking with my father. Hmm. Is that so? Do I really seem that old to her? Detective Gumshoe, I'm counting on you to keep K safe. Yes, sir. You just leave everything to me, sir. And don't worry, I'll take good care of Gummy for you. No, no, nice to get into the blah blah side of things again. Right, K? That's right, Gummy. All they're missing is the last stooge. Well, I guess we have no choice. Ambassador Palato, I'm in your debt. No, no, it's nothing. Because it's about all I can do for you, I'm afraid. I only ask that you please bring Manny's killer to justice. I will, Ambassador, on my honor. Wow, you're so sensational. You really piqued my curiosity. I know they aren't much, but I'm... But know that I'm giving them to you wholeheartedly. <laughs> what are these coupons for? No, that's quite all right. Oh, well, how about this then? Yes, the ink? What exactly is that? It's fountain pen ink. Known as Blaise ink. It's made exclusively in Blaise. So this is Blaise ink. We make it from white crystal oil, which is mined from our mineral mines. Please accept this ink, only one, one dip of your fountain pen in this. And you can write for hours in your organizer. How fortunate for me. The ink in my pen just happened to have run out. I gladly accept your gracious gift. Okay, well that actually is pretty important, so... Great! Wonderful! He kind of reminds me of a combination of red, white, and gaunt, in a way. Okay. I guarantee you that your writing with our ink is an unforgettable experience. And since we don't export it, if you run out, you're always welcome to come and visit our fair nation. Talk about cornering the customer along with the market. Well, shall we get going? Hold it. What's wrong, Kay? I didn't get permission to enter Alabast. So we are going to get get our permission. So we're going to go gather whatever info we can get on the Blaise side, okay? Oh, we already talked to them about this. All right, I'm counting on you two. <laughs> right, and I'm counting on you and Madame Van Kamer to sniff out the clues in Alabast. Oh, and Monsieur Edwards, if you happen to come across my phony, you let me know, okay? If you tell me, I'll rush on right over straight away no matter where you are. I'll let you know when the time comes. Okay, I think we should probably stop the episode here because no, we're almost going to say something. Yeah. Next time, let's play Miles Edward Ace Attorney <laughs> Investigations. We're going to investigate the uh, Alabastian side, is it? Yes. Yeah. Alabastian, Alabastian Embassy. Embassy. So we'll see you then.